Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today is an award-winning actress and activist. Her movie, The Cat, which was considered for an Academy Award last year, has so far garnered more than 25 Best Animation Awards from various international film festivals. Please welcome Mary Apek. Hi. <laughs> Good <Mary>. afternoon. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us today. I know I did watch your film. Congratulations on all of your success. I graduated from college. I started off in the animation department at WME, so I have a lot of experience working with cartoons and voice actors. And I'm a big fan of satire and humor. And I mean, I grew up watching The Simpsons and South Park, so I really feel like um, animation as an art. I just love stuff that articulate such a strong message and that's what you're conveying uh, with your film the cat specifically the the me too movement as well as what's happening internationally right now i have been uh, um, a filmmaker an actress for many years and um yet animation i thought that i can explore more uh, via imagery and it, it it is very effective so I wanted to do something um, significant about the situation of women in Iran that they've been struggling for the past 43 years with this brutal regime and also the Me Too movement as far as women's resistance and, uh, and fighting for the darkness that is uh, coming towards them and fighting back. So um, I thought it's better to use a format of 2D animation actually used in this particular film, which is only 13 minutes and uh, wanted to make a statement in a way for uh, women in Iran, children, child labor, prostitution, trafficking, uh, the brutality that is against them. And so as a result, this collage of work uh, became the story of a little girl who's selling flowers in the streets of Tehran, and this dark shadow is following her to swallow her up. And her, her fight and, uh, and, and her uh, basically at the end, uh, which is like she, she wins this particular with an inner strength. So all this is um, a message that it's worldwide. And I don't think it's just particularly uh, for uh, Me Too movement. I think it's for women's movement. And in, in particular right now with what's happening in Iran for the past two, three months, which is devastating. The news is that come and we hear uh, from Iran is just uh, ironic that this picture is like sort of it was made yesterday or two months ago. Yet I was thinking about that prior and majority of my work actually has been um, uh, dedicated to this matter for the past uh, 40 years. You've brought up a few things as well, too. You know, I mean, I know you're Armenian. I'm half Armenian as well, too. Um, we would have been um, Hovagimian. My great grandfather, they came here in the early 1900s, uh, settled in Fresno, and then eventually came down to Los Angeles. I do have a family friend from Iran who came over 40 years ago. They had an HBO series on recently about uh, the hostage crisis in 79 and 80. A classmate of mine, and when I was in middle school, his father was actually Jerry Plotkin, one of the uh, hostages who was at the U.S. Embassy uh, during mm -hmm. that period. So for me, it was interesting to learn about your story. And then when I was watching the documentary, seeing my friend's parents on old news footage, and then all of this happening today within the last three months, and then you had released The Cat about a year and a half ago. Yes, I mean, when you talk about the Armenian and the 20th century, the first massacre of the 20th century was the Armenian genocide by the Ottoman Empire in, the, in that region, in Turkey and in that region of the um, Middle East. Uh, a million and a half Armenians were killed, butchered, massacred, and the world turned their head. They didn't look at it. They didn't help the Armenians. They just like when you mentioned your grandparents or great grandparents, they came and they settled in Fresno and they seeked refuge there and, and they started contributing to the land and to the country of uh, majority of Armenians are just spread all around the world. On my family, we've been in Iran for 400 years and we have never had issues, particularly when uh, the king and the dynasty of Pahlavi was there. We didn't know or we didn't care whether someone was Jewish or Armenian or Baha'i or the religion didn't matter. It was just love, kindness and trying to really be the best in, in our profession, no matter what that was. So uh, so the country just turned around via this Islamic revolution. And my family didn't feel comfortable about just because of the Christian background to be there and because of the past, because of the history that we've had all around in that region. 
with Armenians. So um, I have been here for many, many years, but I have been voicing since I was born in Iran. I, you know, I'm considering myself an Iranian and of course an Armenian. You know, there's two bags always, like one Iranian, one Armenian, and you just carry it through, through, through your life. Uh, I've been a uh, on the board of directors of Armenian Film Foundation. And one of the things that we have done through the past 40 years is preservation of documents of the Armenian genocide. We have about 400 uh, live interviews with people who actually witnessed. And they were only nine years old, 10 years old. They witnessed and they talked about it. And we have one of the largest private archival on the Armenian genocide witnesses. And it's online, people can check it, Armenian Film Foundation. So I've always been an activist and, and trying to, to voice uh, the voiceless. And uh, so within Iran now, which is the country of my birth, and uh, I adore Iran. They're wonderful people. They're amazing, uh, talented, genius individuals there that they're escaping Iran right now. And actually they've been escaping for the past 40 years in different um, professions and establishing themselves in different countries. So now we're coming together you know, on the streets, we're demonstrating on social media, we're posting to bring attention to the issue of Iran. It's such a mess politically that the people are suffering and especially women. I had, uh, you know, different doctors and people of uh, all walks of life talk about like our personal struggles and everyone's unique and has a backstory. And I always try to put myself in check, like whatever I'm going through, I'm like, look, I get to host a show. I get to talk to interesting people such as yourself, talk about world issues. And at the same time, it's there's someone else in another part of the world that's dealing with something that I wouldn't even know how to comprehend, take life, treasure every moment of it, be involved. We all have to be aware. Of. Even now, we're at a, an interesting point in humanity with a technology. We're all connected more than ever, yet we all feel so distant. And, and at the same time with with phones and like you said just i mean you can go on your iphone and you can see exactly what's happening in iran where you know 40 years ago during the hostage crisis you would have had to wait till the evening news or i think actually i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think i recall seeing something in a documentary about that was really kind of the start of the 24-hour news cycle as well to uh, the hostage crisis so it is important that we stay informed, stay aware. And I mean, I'm someone too, it's unless I have a real firsthand experience, I'm very careful about what I put out there because I don't want to come across a certain way or not as informed and then say the wrong thing. So I appreciate your time and for, you know, giving my audience this insight and you speak with such passion and you've had such an admirable career. You've been interviewed by CNN and major news outlets. Your work has been featured in various international film festivals. I really am an admirer of your work. Everyone, please give it up for Mary Avick. She's the director of the short film, The Cat, which is on YouTube. Now you have to Google her name, Mary Avick, The Cat. Then you can watch on YouTube. It's a powerful film. Mary, we appreciate you uh, sharing your story and your journey. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Anytime. Thank you.